uh, for my book review, I did The Code of the Street by Elijah Anderson. Um, Elijah Anderson is a professor of sociology at Yale University. He's written 11 books, uh, and he focuses on urban inequality, social deviance, and race relations. In this book, his main argument was that social consequences of persistent urban poverty and joblessness are a result of alienation from mainstream society and its institutions, especially for young people, it results in an underground economy. So basically because of how far the inner city black community has drifted away from mainstream society, um, the more they've had to come up with their own way and own means to survive in. That's where the drug trade comes in and prostitution comes in and uh, all this violence over money and gangs and drugs and it's just an outlet for them to find a life that they can like have meaning towards and and uh, have us like a sense of self so what is the code of the street exactly um, it's unwritten rules and rituals that black people in the inner city must live by daily um, a couple big ones are respect. Uh, you have to be able to demand respect and perceive respect from other people. Uh, you have to put off a sort of toughness about you. You have to let other people know you're willing to defend yourself and you can't be easily taken advantage of. Um, and you also have to show that you're against mainstream society because anyone that's against mainstream society can uh, face or anyone that's with mainstream society or resembles it can cause the street people to uh, harass them and come at them negatively. And I'll explain that more. Um, so Anderson breaks it down between decent people and street people. Um, so this is what separates, I guess, the, the different types of black people in black people in the inner city. Uh, Decent people have goals, they have morals. Um, they usually try to raise their kids in a, in a good way and enforce hard work and, and working towards something, making something of your life. Whereas street people uh, have felt so left out and alienated from society that um, they go the other way where they form this sort of counterculture and um, all of their goals and morals come through drugs and money and it gives them like a sense of power within the neighborhood. The dilemma of the decent people is that they're living in the same neighborhood. So their family members are involved, their friends are involved, their girlfriends, boyfriends may not be involved with the street people and therefore it, it causes a lot of social interaction between the two groups and people from different groups. Um, it's tough to raise decent kids if their friends or outside influences are street kids or street people. Um, if you represent a wider society, you're looked at as like going against what the street people stand for and therefore you're like their enemy kind of and they'll they'll provoke harm and harass you and kind of police the way that the decent people act to make sure that they're not conforming too much to mainstream society, which and they call acting white. Um, so the story of Tyree, uh, he was a teenager, 17 years old, um, and he just left a, a neighborhood with his mom to move into a different neighborhood where him and his mom were moving in with his grandmother. And within a, few, within a few days of living there, his grandmother asked him to go down to the store. And he was walking down to the store and he saw a group of, of gang members. And there's about 15 to 20 of them, as he says in the story. And it was too late to run because if you run and you keep running away from it, then they know that they have that control over you. So. Whenever they see you, they might say, hey, let me borrow a couple dollars, or hey, let me get that food you got in that bag, or 
they'll feel entitled to just taking things from you because they know you won't do anything. So in turn, he didn't run away and he stayed and they jumped him and beat the shit out of him. Um, and so he was upset, angry, went home uh, and stayed inside for a couple days, kind of watched his back. And then a few weeks later, it happened again. He came across the same people. He didn't run again. He confronted them and confronted them and said, like, what's up? Like, can I, basically, can I be a part of your crew? And in turn, they said, yeah, but you have to fight JC, who's the biggest and strongest kid. So uh, Tyree went toe to toe with JC for 15 to 20 minutes. And then after, and like he showed them that he held his own and after he was a part of their group and now he had like protection in the neighborhood and um, and access to money and drugs and other things that a young man in the inner city might want. So why do people turn to the street? Uh, there's no jobs left in the inner city. Um, all the jobs that urban people used to work are moving overseas and our country's kind of moving away from um, that industrial industrialization phase of of uh, society um, the welfare reform welfare is not guaranteed anymore and it runs out at a certain point so people got to find a way to make money uh, they have this want for material things so uh, the author describes how certain jackets and certain shoes and jewelry uh, is a major symbol in the inner city for um, respect or power and so when a kid that has nothing like that sees that like it's easy for him to just jump into that lifestyle uh, they also have a lack of role, mo role models there's not enough decent role models to guide the decent kids and therefore the street role models take over um, and another reason is the glorification of the fast life in movies like uh, Boys in the Hood or Scarface or anything like that it makes it seem cool that selling drugs and killing people and objectifying women is cool and uh, music like some of the mainstream hip hop music that we see today just promotes this lifestyle of shooting and selling crack and doing this and doing that and it just when these kids hear their idols and these people they listen to rapping about that it just seems like the way of life that they were supposed to go to um, so the main concepts uh, impression management and the fact that the decent people have to hold up an impression in front of the street people so that the street people don't know that they're like too decent or too striving in their life um, this takes like a lot of emotion labor out of the decent people because like even the most decent, even the best kid in the neighborhood at, at some point has to come to terms with the street and make some sort of commitment to the street, even if they don't want to at all. Uh, face work is seen by all parties, um, gang members amongst gang members, uh, decent people to street people, um, grandmothers and mothers and fathers to their kids. Uh, they just have to maintain face and make sure that uh, they don't lose face in front of the wrong people. Uh, the symbolic boundaries, there's just groups put in, or groups put into different categories and that creates like this us first them. And there's definitely an us first them between wider, wider society and the inner city. But then within the inner city, there's a us versus them in the decent people versus the street people. Uh, the whole thing runs off the, the code of the street, which is, sim is a symbolic code or like a system of ideas that everyone understands how you have to act and what you have to do and what the social norms are you have to agree to and, and use to help maneuver the public spaces. And then the presentation of self, obviously, um, just because every experience that uh, these kids and young people face in the inner city shapes their sense of self and how they view themselves and what they 
want and what they want to do with their life. Um, the implications to society, like society doesn't really care because it's not a problem in the media. So no one ever hears about it. They're not experiencing it. So it's not a problem to them, especially if they don't live near an inner city or know anyone that's in an inner city or care for anyone that's in an inner city. It's just never going to affect them. So they're not going to like take pride in trying to go help that. So um, also what plays a part is black people have been misrepresented in the media for all of time since slavery as criminals and, and animals and predators and the only other thing you see them as is an athlete or a rapper and so when these inner city kids are looking out to the world they see themselves portrayed in only a few ways so it only it, it makes them feel like there's only a few ways to live their life um, Anderson closes basically in saying that if something doesn't come and help soon and our government doesn't step in or we don't make some sort of law to help um, that conditions will just get worse and violence will get more gruesome and and m like it'll happen more around the inner cities uh, only critique I have it's not really a critique it's a question like how can we make people wake up to extreme poverty in our own country like if the media isn't going to show it then how can socially aware like affluent people let the rest of society know like that this is happening and people are starving dying addicted to drugs killing each other all because they're so alienated from the mainstream american way the end